Um, but our next session will be about how Decatrovista, Zetland, and Denmark, and Ciper in Chile have turned their members into ambassadors. This is um, a tactic that we at MPP are watching with great interest because we really see um, organizations' members as one of their greatest assets in their quest for impact and sustainability. And we're really encouraged by how these three organizations are experimenting with ways to make the members an even more meaningful part of that work. So Federica, I will uh, let you introduce our three panelists today. Thank you. Um, so we have um, Christian Lupsa, um, who's one of the co-founding editors of um, DOOR, Decatur Revista. Um, a digital and print magazine in Romania that believes that well-crafted narrative journalism can connect people, um, heal wounds, inspire, lead, and create change. Um, Christian started his career in journalism um, in 2000 and taken him from Romania to the US and then back. And in 2019, he started um, Door. And since 20, uh, 2011, he's also the host of The Power of Storytelling, which is many in, in, in the audience might be aware of. It's an international storytelling conference um, in Bucharest. Um, welcome, welcome, Christian. Um, we also have um, Jacob Moll, um, the co-founder and former CEO of Zetland a membership-based digital newspaper um, in Denmark. Um, early this summer, Jacob moved to Boston to spend a year as a fellow at the Neiman Foundation um, for journalists at Harvard. Uh, and he will tell us more about um, how Zetland currently employs 40 people and has been financially sustainable since um, 2019. Um, Zetland is also often mentioned as an inspiration on how to turn to their members as ambassadors. So we're really uh, looking forward to hearing more um, from, from Jacob now. Um, and um, on our panel is also um, Claudia Roqueta, um, community editor at Plus Cyper. Um, she designed, developed, and, and currently leads the media membership system at um, CIPA um, in, in Chile. Uh, and she's also in charge of the sustainability um, aspect uh, at Chile. Um, she is, uh, has worked in various media before, and she's um, a teacher at different universities. Um, so um, I. Um, I can see you all now. Um, welcome, everyone. Um, I um, just wanted to, to start, um, as, as Ariel was saying, during the session, we'll talk about how to turn to your most loyal readers, most loyal um, audience members and, and, and members um, to turn them into the strongest supporters, your, your ambassadors. Um, but before we get started, for those who are not familiar with your um, organizations, can you briefly um, do a tour and tell us one thing that everyone should know about your organization that is really um, recognizable? Um, Christian, do you wanna start? Sure. Uh, so first of all, thank you. Thank you, Federica. This has been a, quite of a dream to be on a panel hosted by you. So this is, uh, this is awesome. Um, and thanks uh, to Ariel and Jay uh, and everyone at MPT for putting this together. You've been a great help and inspiration over the past few years. So as, as Federica was saying, um, We've been around for 12 years and we are in the sort of a news you can feel business uh, because we, we believe strongly that by showing the human experience uh, at the center of systemic issues, whether that's inequality, discrimination, domestic violence, uh, we can help our community understand uh, complexity and see solutions become more empathetic, ideally, although that's complicated in these divided times, and uh, even make better choices as, 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 as citizens. And since we've been around for uh, 12 years, we're, we started as an independent print only uh, quarterly publication. Uh, we've always had uh, memberful routines to use sort of the uh, MPP language. We had subscriptions to the magazine, but we've always had a community around and they've informed our work and we brought them together in various ways. Um, and we slowly embarked on a journey inspired by all the changes many of you made a few years ago to do digital uh, memberships um, that will also complement the things we do with our community and events and um, other types of um, ways we work together. So I think that sort of covers where we are right now. Thank you. Um, Claudia. I think you're on mute. I think, I don't know if Jacob can unmute you. Ah, oh, perfect. Yeah, yes. 
Okay. Well, thank you very much for this great invitation. And I have to say something very important that the first time that I hear about the membership system, I didn't have a clue about it, was like three or four years ago. And it was for the membership uh, project. And so I'm incredibly happy to be here because I never thought that uh, I will work with you, you know? So really, thank you very much. And for us, it's a great inspiration. And in fact, for example, um, we hear about Zetland and the ambassador system that they have. And because of that, we start with this. Okay, and what is CIPER? Well, uh, the important thing is what we do in CIPER, uh, investigative journalism, that's our heart. And um, it's the first and the unique media in Chile that works just about investigate, investigations, you know. And we are a digital and independent media born like a powerful watchdog that expose crimes and talk about invisible problems. I think that that's the most important from us and that a lot of people believe in us because of that. Um, we are really, really independent. And now with the membership system, uh, I can say that the 70% of our uh, revenues uh, come from the members. So, we are really, really happy with this. And well, that's what we are doing now. Thanks so much, um, Claudia. Um, Jakob. Uh, first of all, Claudia, it makes me really, really happy to hear that uh, you've been able to, uh, to use some of our experience or not, or maybe not make some of our mistakes. So, uh, so that really makes me happy. But um, Monday, Jay, Jay talked about uh, thick and thin membership models. I would say uh, uh, we certainly tries to be as thick a membership model as we can in all that we do. Uh, one of our, the ways we do that, I think, is to try to learn as much from the tech industry as possible in terms of like really thinking hard about the member perspective uh, and how to publish. So I think one of the things we, we have published in a bunch of different ways, but like learning from the members and listening to them, we've ended up having audio as the most important thing, um, the way to publish. Uh, and we started off as a text-based publication. So I think that's that maybe tells how we how do we try to adapt to everything the, the members can teach us about how we can be valuable in their lives. Thank you. Um, thank you, um, all of you. Um, I want to run this session as a sort of like live practical case studies, because I think often is what MPP excels in is really giving practical advice to people who might be thinking of turning members into ambassadors. Sounds great. How do I do it? Can I ask each of you briefly to tell us you had this idea? What first steps? What, what do you do first? How do you think about the design phase of, of um, turning members into ambassadors? Um, Jakob, do you want to start? Uh, yeah, um, I would say our very first step was to do a test run uh, in, in 2018. Uh, so, so we had some ideas that this might work. It was kind of like, especially in journalism, it wasn't tried. So we tried to learn a little bit from, from, from other fields. Um, and we learned, we, we, we did something that was totally wrong, uh, which is that we, we had our members give away free memberships. So, so that you know, their friends could try uh, set them for free. We're a paid publication. We're fully funded by, by membership payments, and that turned out to be 100% wrong because uh, people will will accept a gift in a given situation, but that doesn't mean they will go home and actually do the, they may make the effort of figuring out what things are. So, so we did we we converted very few members at the end, like a bunch of, of free memberships were given out, but but nothing happened at the other end. So, so. So, so, so back to the fundamental idea of, of experimenting and testing and learning from that. So that's where we began. And then the following year, we spent at least like eight, eight months, I would say, researching uh, from other businesses. Like there is a British um, a great beer company called BrewDog, who's, who's excellent at building like community around beer uh, and making people feel like they're members of a Brewing company, it's incredible work. Um, I don't understand how they do it. We learned from them, from Adidas, the sports, like like they've really been able to build build like community around their products. And we personally think journalism a little bit more cool than sneakers, maybe. Um, and uh, and then we we asked our members when we actually got to uh, to like we like we, we prepared a narrative. We, we did all sorts of preparations, and then I'm and I might be getting back to that. We began by asking our members, 
how we could help them help us. Um, again, back to the fundamental idea that if we have an important question, we should never like go out and, and just like think we have the precise answer uh, for anything. We should always involve the members. So we did that in, in that process as well. Of course, I could speak for hours on a very long and complicated process, but uh, those would be That's like a, a, few, first step. a few yeah. first steps. Love learning from other industries is, is, is very good. Um, Claudia, but what about you? Um, what did um, SIPA do? You said um, you, you, you learned from, from Zetland, but what was the first step in terms of the design phase of, of what the campaign could look like? Well, like, as I say, uh, we learned from Zetland and we, we found it and we said, oh my God, this, this, this um, experience is incredible. And maybe we can do the same or similar because our members are very commitment with us. So uh, the first thing that we start to study, like really study other experiences, you know, the first one was Setland, but then um, then we start to, to see Crowd Reporter, Door, for example. So uh, what we start to see what they did and how, how they did it because we had a lot of questions and about, okay, how we share the, 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 the products, the, I don't know, the videos with the people, with the members, you know, maybe very simple things, but that we didn't know how to do it. So that was the first thing, yeah? And, and start to make answers to us, like, can we replicate the same or we need uh, our own way different, what is different, you know? That was the first, the first thing. Then uh, on February of this year, we sent a survey to our members. Okay, at that moment, we had around uh, 3,000 3, and a half, uh, um, more or less. And 80% of the total of members we had uh, at that moment answered that they will be happy to help us to add more members. We didn't say, how? But we ask, oh, do you want to, do you like, do you would like to, to help us to add more members? And the 80% say yes. So we decide, okay, maybe this can be a very good way to add more members. Then um, after that, we design a schedule per week. Okay. We said, okay, uh, we, at first we thought, okay, Two months, no, it's too much. Six weeks, okay, at the end we decide four weeks, you know, um, uh, in this design, um, we, we start with the tone of the campaign, for example, the first week, the second week, how the, uh, to reboost the campaign, uh, and the second and the, this, the, the, the first week. Parallel, uh, we start to design different pieces to share with our members. Uh, pieces to social media, posters, a bookmark, even videos, you know. And we then build a Dropbox to share these materials. And well, we designed five videos and then start the production of it. They are ready now. And I have one example of one of these videos. This is, um, we didn't start with this video. Uh, this is new, you know, uh, so Jacob do it. We have this video and I want to explain a bit, a bit about, about this, this video and why it's so important for us. Okay. Queremos compartir contigo una gran noticia. Hemos logrado que el 70% de los recursos para el área periodística de CIPER se financien con los aportes de los socios y las socias de nuestra comunidad más CIPER. Gracias a la comunidad más CIPER y al aporte de nuestros socios, hemos crecido. Sumando a más periodistas como yo para hacer nuevas investigaciones. Ya son más de 4.500 socios los que consideran a CIPER un medio imprescindible y que mes a mes hacen su aporte. Nuestra meta es aumentar nuestro equipo periodístico. Para lograrlo, estamos trabajando con nuestros socios para sumar nuevos miembros entre sus amigos, familiares y conocidos. Únete a este esfuerzo ciudadano. Hazte socio de la comunidad más CIPER, porque la verdad la descubrimos entre todos. Wow. ¿Qué es esto? Uh, 
to be uh, okay. Um, and we decide to show this video when we have the, the first um, week of the campaign because we want uh, to show um, that our team is real people, you know, because we, we talk about a lot of data, uh, of a lot of very, very uh, complicated things, and, but we have faces and we want to say that uh, the team, this is the team, this is the people who, uh, who, um, with you are working, you know, this is the people that you are helping and, and you are part of this team. So we call, our call was that, well, we have the 70% of our um, revenue, it comes from the members. And now we are working with the members and they are trying to add more members from their friends, families, colleagues, you know, that's the, the idea from the video. And to make something close, um, uh, close, closer uh, with the people, you know, because we are like very far away, uh, writing about data and a lot of things like very, very difficult. But no, yes, here we are, you know, so that was the idea. And well, um, after that, uh, we select the influencers. We have a list of friends of CIPER, ex-journalists of CIPER, famous journalists from other medias, actors, scientists, uh, and a lot of different people. And we made a selection of 81 potential aliens from this campaign. And on middle of July, we sent an email to all our members, and that moment 4,400, uh, inv invited them to help us. 185 say yes. Uh, and we add this member to our WhatsApp. And at that moment, we have to stop the process because we had a controversy in social media. So we have the, the, the campaign like frozen in this moment because we are waiting that that happened, that, that finish. The truth is that nothing really happened, but we want to be really sure about that. Nothing will be like a more important than this call. So we have everything ready and we, we we want to call our members again to add more members to help us. And after that, we will start, we will really start the campaign. I'll ask you, I'll ask you more about this um, in a bit. Um, thanks, Claudia. Um, Claudia has, has started telling us from the idea concretely, how did you turn into reality? Um, thanks, thanks, Claudia. Um, I wanted to go to, um, to Dor and Zedland. Um, Christian, can, can you tell us more about um, how did you went from, from design phase to, to concretely what did you do? What people should um, should do if they want to have a similar campaign? I know you have slides. Let me share. I have slides uh, <laughs> for you. So let me share that just a second. So at, while you pull those up, one thing I will add, because uh, this ties to conversations from, from a few days ago, um, we were very diligent over the past two, three years as we made changes to uh, do this change to sort of make reader revenue our, our, our primary source of, of revenue because we're in Eastern Europe, which means in Eastern Europe, you have to find some hyper hybrid models to make things work. And we just wanted to drop the influence of ads and other ways in, in which we were trying to, to, to fundraise. Uh, and we used sort of try to manage expectations on the team. Things were going swell and then the pandemic hit. Um, so our campaign was born in a way in a, in a time where we had to accelerate this, this change uh, and we dropped our print subscriptions. That was the number one thing we did, uh, which never passed uh, 2,500. So that was 2,500, 3,000 people. That was our max. Um, so we said, okay, now, we, now we're, we're all in. So we have to do this. Uh, so um, Reading Zetland's um, case study was very helpful to us as well. We always used uh, uh, or, or ideas from our community and the ways we fundraised and did campaigns in the past, but we didn't necessarily involve them directly as ambassadors. So what we did 
and there's a there's a lot of bullet points on that I, that I put together. That was our that was our visual. So here's what we actually did. We had a sort of a pre-campaign team that got together, did some research, uh, figured out the, a really banal technical aspect, but we just wanted to start with that, looked into a referral mechanism that would work with WooCommerce, where we do our, how we, which is how we run our memberships, because we wanted to give people a dedicated URL so they could send out we to, to people to sort of show who brought whom. Um, so that was our, uh, our, our, uh, starting point, we put together the idea of, of this campaign, and then we went back to our core principles and our mission to sort of validate uh, all, all of this before reaching out to our community. Um, and what we decided is we are not, this is not going to be a membership drive. This is going to be a campaign where we remind our community, especially in the times of a pandemic, of the healing power of stories. And that is something Dor has always believed in. And that is what we wanted to talk about. And sort of our message was, uh, we wanna, uh, of course, we wanna increase our, our member base and our, uh, and our community, and we need your support to do these kinds of stories that, that heal. So that's, uh, that's what povesti le vindeca means, that, that's, that stories heal. So that's uh, the message our campaign was built around. So we reached out uh, to our existing uh, members about maybe a couple of thousand at, the, at, at that point, a little over a thousand, uh, 2,000. Um, what is not on the slide, we also had our staff individually go through our member list and see who they knew and reach out personally. So I think each of us wrote anywhere from 20 to 50 emails. So that was, about, that was a good couple of hundred direct contacts. And about 500, well, 565 uh, members in our community actually activated this dedicated URL. So went through the trouble of going through some technical steps and sort of signing up as, uh, as ambassadors. And then uh, in the weeks prior to, to starting the campaign, we did a couple of Zoom calls with as many ambassadors that wanted, as, uh, as wanted as they wanted to show up and we told them this is why we're doing it this is how we're doing it um, this is why you are important in this uh, in this endeavor and we are not asking you to fundraise for us so uh, we don't necessarily want you to go on social media or go to your network and just say hey door needs money go go over and uh, sign up as a member it was mostly if you believe in the kind of work that we do if there are stories that have touched you if there are things that have meant something to you uh, tell that to your community. Tell tell them if we were useful uh, to you, if our stories had any impact on, on your life. So I've highlighted the Zoom calls because uh, you asked uh, Federica if there's one particular tool that was useful to us. And Zoom is not necessarily a spectacular tool, but I will highlight that these calls that we did prior to starting the campaign um, with, with a few dozen people, they really fired up those uh, the, the, those few dozen people that just helped us kick off tremendously on on day one, and I think I think that more close uh, the, that close connection helped. So once we started, and this was a six week campaign, we thought a lot about whether six weeks is um, is too much, uh, but we sort of planned it all out, and we planned it to coincide uh, the ending to coincide with our 11 year anniversary. So we said we can stretch it out for, for six weeks and uh, tell different stories during this six weeks and permit, uh, you know, that 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 last wave uh, to to sort of coincide with our anniversary. So we communicated with ambassadors uh, weekly. We sent them an ambassador uh, kit with a lot of uh, images and a lot of uh, things they could assort goodies they can post. Uh, we also asked them to send us testimonials about their interaction with our work and some sent videos. Uh, we even had members that did animation. So they actually worked to uh, uh, spread our message into the world. And that was absolutely um, uh, amazing. Um, so that enabled us to sort of start together with the community uh, because we did not have the resources to communicate much farther than our own channels. So having, I don't know, 30, 40, 60 people on those first two, three days spread that message together with us. Uh, that, is, that helped, uh, helped 
tremendously uh, and helped, helped us have a good start because every campaign, as those of you who have done one know, there's always a bit of a slump in the middle of the campaign. So our strong start and then our strong, uh, strong ending really helped us overcome that sort of midway uh, slump that sometimes happens. Thank you. Um, thanks, Christian. Um, Jakob, what about Zetland? Um, you kept being referred as the examples, and I know you also have a couple of slides. Um, what, what did you concretely, how does the ambassadorship um, work at, at Zetland? Um, so just broken down into a few, into a few steps. Um, First of all, I think I think it's important to say that you can't like you can't you can't start an, an, a campaign like out of the blue and 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 ask these these questions. It had there has to be a foundation of a, of a relationship between you and your community that makes it meaningful meaningful to 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 uh, to to ask them to be ambassadors. So so we had the benefit of having worked to to convince our members uh, to become loyal. Um, I believe that first you need to to be trustworthy, and then you can build a relationship, and then eventually you can you can ask for for loyalty or hope for loyalty, and and because they knew we were listening to them, um, and which they don't expect people don't expect from journal you know from 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 journalistic public publishers, we we had you know we had the relationship that um, that that was that sort of necessary, um, then then of course like between. Along with, with with step two, which is is to tell a story about you know why you're doing this. Of course, we 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 had to decide on a model, uh, and I think it's I think it's valuable to to think of of like ambassador like referral transaction as as user experiences, and 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 you have to be mindful of both the person that you want to be an ambassador, of course, and the person you want to to receive the ambassador uh, gift and and convert into a paying member. So, so we decided on uh, on a model where um, oh, uh, one step back, please. We decided on a model where um, people could uh, pay what they want. So that was the 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 special thing that amb ambassadors could do. They could let their members, their, their friends, pay what they want, including nothing. So, so that that was that was psychologically that that was a, that that seemed like a good step because we we don't like to. Uh, to like to ask our friends necessarily to pay money for stuff but but because it was up to the receiver to to decide whether they wanted to pay pay for that it felt like that that was like a good driver of of like like that was good for the psychology of the ambassador of course our in, our, our intention was that as many as possible uh chose something more than the number zero when they had to decide what they wanted to pay for the first month and 75 percent uh, and like actually paid, uh, paid for 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 the membership, and when they did, they were told even if it was just like a single Danish kroner, they were told, okay, we, this will be a recurring membership, and this was like very important, and it was very clear about it, and people accepted that, and that's why we ended up converting members. Anyway, that was the model. At the same time, we had the benefit of of uh, of being in, in a bit of a crisis. We were doing really well. We had around fifteen thousand members, or a bit less. But we needed to grow a bit to be to be stable, and so we sort of had a burning platform that was our story. And the way we launched the campaign was with the story on the right side of the picture, which was a story I published uh, that like laid all of our numbers bare. It was with inspiration from uh, from Republik in Switzerland that are brilliant at, at these things and and at being like actively transparent. And and the, the 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 clue to being transparent, I would say, is always to be most transparent when you are most vulnerable or most in doubt. Because that that's when, when people feel uh, that you're living, breathing humans with 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 challenges that they might even help with. Um, so um, so and and we spent a lot of like effort on telling those stories. I wrote a series on like the business side, and the editor in chief made a great podcast series. Uh, Leah is her name on on uh, on like the emotional situation we were in and um involved like spoke with members and and which was a was a great uh hit can you take uh, a slide please and and i would say back to to my point earlier is that we we uh we made it as as early as possible about the members so the very first thing you would you would you would uh you would you would um like meet in any of these stories we published about our situation and 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 the uh, 
the campaign we were we were going to start was a type form that made people sign up for uh, to be an ambassador and and that in itself was like a funnel that pulled people in closer by asking them how you know what were they interested in do, did they want us to send us physical stuff would they rather do something else did they have ideas uh, what do they you know all sorts of questions that made it very clear that 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 it was about them and then as i say step four embrace magic um so so in building the campaign you want to be proactive and really think through the processes also the social and emotional processes in the campaign but once the, the campaign is rolling you want to be reactive so like for instance the two pictures on on the right side one was a nurse on the other end of, of the country from Copenhagen who, who, sa who said that, that she had asked her, she, she wrote us a nice letter and said she had asked her, uh, the, the, the director of her hospital where she worked, if she could put up our posters. And, and we wrote back, could you, oh, can you, can you send us a picture of you with one of our posters? So we sent that, of course, we immediately sent that out to all the other ambassadors and members. To see, okay, this this is happening, and the, and one of our favorite pic pictures is the bottom one. Was an ambassador who said, um, we could see on, on social media, she had written that she was going to um, for her thirtieth birthday, she was just going to ask her her, her guests to uh, to sign up for Setland as the present to her, which was just so incredibly nice. So we said to Alexandra, as her name is, could you please send us a picture of the birthday and we could tell that story. So, so again, you, we, you send, you build momentum by, by building a sense that, that things are happening, real wonderful people are doing stuff. And as you said before, uh, using these are pictures, but we, we used video a lot, really like, like stuff we produced within 24 hours, again, to build momentum and a sense of, of, of stuff rolling. At the end of, of the campaign, we had, we had 1,500 uh, ambassadors around the country. Yeah, that's it. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, I have a bazillion of questions, but I'm going to see um, what is there in on, on the chat as well. Um, um, it's another one about about the tools, um, which I, I know it's not really about uh, endorsing one specific tool, but maybe um, maybe we can ask Sarah to put that in the chat, um, and and it's for Zetlin and, and Jakob can 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 answer later about what kind of tool you're using. Um, I just wanted to to ask um, very briefly. I know I know we're running out of time, but. Um, if, if there is anyone in the audience who's thinking about, um, you know, em embarking in, in, into, into a campaign like this, what I took away from all the different things um, you, you've been doing is that um, although this is really uh, a marketing uh, exercise, it's really about being honest, about being personal, about being real, and really using a marketing technique, but but to real to 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 connect more personally and more more real. Um, Christian, you mentioned you had a, a campaign team. Um, who was part of this team? Who who actually drove this um, this campaign? So one thing I'll, I'll add to that is we made it very. So we made kind of a loud noise in our newsroom. There were about 20, 22 of us uh, around the time we had the campaign. This was this was a team. This was a team effort. I understand for larger newsrooms, you can separate. You just have people keep doing the work, and then have uh, other people just run the business. But in smaller uh, newsrooms like ours, this was such a crucial moment that it had to be like a team effort. That's why everyone emailed their friends. So I just want to put that out there because I know many of of us worry like should the journalists be involved should they keep doing the journalism and i, I think at times like this you can uh, you can you can get involved because this is why you come back to work in a membership uh, driven newsroom i think so uh, i think that's very that's very important so we had we had six people take on multiple uh, roles and that is not these were not necessarily their their day job so some were uh, we had a communications manager uh, that sounds very fancy. That is actually one of our reporters, which is really good with social media. So this became her her full time job for for a month. Um, we had our community manager uh, Carla step up and take the role of project manager, something she'd never done before. So just learning on the fly how you uh, run a team like this. We had our uh, art director become sort of like a social media expert producing videos and uh and and pictures and and everything and then we had 
Um, we had a few other colleagues involved at the beginning doing a little work on project management, some development that was needed to get the referral tool working, but it, it was uh, just the day to day running of the campaign. It was mostly doing uh, outreach with the community, doing communications, doing the visuals and just making sure um, the technology runs and that we are there to do service our, our members if something goes wrong. So that's that's sort of the, the team that was put together for this. Um, some of you, oh, actually all of you, um, refer to to really a, a tone of, of a campaign, really what kind of tone of voice, and, and Jacob would just uh, put a comment on how important is the person that owns um, the tone of voice. Um, Jacob, what do you mean by that? What, what is the tone of voice? Um, a tone of voice, I think, is is uh, sort of like the secret ingredient in a sense, because because um, again, as as in the membership business, which which we are all in or interested in in becoming, uh, one of the biggest challenges is that people have a bunch of expectations when it comes to journalism. We have a, a, a history and, and decades of of, of uh, uh, journalists uh, sitting in an ivory tower, and um, and having all the answers. So so. So if like if you want to create a different relationship, it has to begin with with feeling and sounding like like real human people, uh, human beings. And and after onboarding many journalists uh, over the years, I can say that, that it's, it's actually quite difficult to get journalists to stop sounding like uh, like a news writing machines, even the most talented ones. And to, so so uh, so so I think it's uh, you, you definitely want uh, hopefully several people. That can that can write an email that just sounds like they're from a, a, a wonderful person who's uh, upbeat and interested in what you're doing and and doesn't sound sound like a marketing uh, email of, of trying to be energetic from your insurance company. So so and and if you like if you miss that tone of voice, people will, will I think will tune out in seconds because we we're, we're so used to this fake authenticity, and we want the the real authenticity of like. The people that we we are right here being you know journalism is journalism is important we're trying to save the world with it uh you know that has to be felt even in an email or visually or in in video um we have um a question um from mike um is there a designated person in the newsroom to keep ambassadors involved so after the campaign um what what is the communication that keeps happening um with the ambassadors um christian maybe so we talked a lot about this we sort of closed the loop so we had a we had a zoom call at, at the end we also did a couple of workshops with some of the uh, ambassadors that brought brought in uh a certain number of, uh, of of new members, but we decided to close the loop and then not treat ambassadors as sort of uh, VIP uh, members of our community. So we 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 wanted to just close this loop, give special thanks to them, do something special for them, but then return to treating everyone uh, sort of equal in our community. And yes, we do have dedicated uh, community engagement. Uh, um colleagues do, doing that right now but with ambassadors we we wanted to close that loop and not vip them further <laughs> um i have another so many questions uh, but i know i will um overstay my welcome and jacob and ariel will kick me out if i keep going um thank you very much um if anyone has more questions like me uh you can maybe continue the conversation in the chat um claudia christian jacob um, thank you very much for joining us uh, and back to you, Ariel. Thank you, everybody. And uh, in the post um, session resources that we'll send out today, we'll share a case study of Zetland and a case study of uh, Doors ambassador campaigns. And we look forward to studying uh, CPAIR's ambassador campaign and writing a case study about that in the, in the future. Thank you, everybody, for joining and for getting so deep into the details of these. I know everybody always wants to know how they work behind the scenes. We got a lot of that today.